أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتباه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون صدق الله العظيم Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Our sustainer, our creator, our nourisher Who gifted us with the great gift of life And the greater gift of faith So we can know the purpose of this life We live in a time when people are lost in heedlessness And therefore they are heedless of three key facts. They are heedless of where they came from. They forget that they have a creator. And why did that creator create them? SubhanAllah, each and every one of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us our life. He gifted us our consciousness. He gifted us our ability to see and to hear and to witness His greatness. Why? Because He was a hidden treasure who wished to be known. So He gifted us ourselves so that we can bear witness to His greatness in this dunya before we meet Him in the akhirah. And those who use this short time in the dunya to build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the eternal bliss and facility as they are reunited with him at the moment of death. But most people are heedless of where did they came from. And they forget where they are. They are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ Allah is with you wherever you are. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بصير. Allah sees all that you do. He hears all that you do. They forget that fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records each and every word that they say. And that is why unfortunately we find that there's a lot of breakdown in our interactions with each other. We forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing all that we do. And people also forget where their return is. That their return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately. But our faith he answers these three questions for us and it's truly a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with the gift of life and in fact as you read in the Holy Quran there is only one creature in the Holy Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as loving and that is the righteous human being in Allah yuhib al-muttaqeen in Allah yuhib al-muhsineen in Allah yuhib al-muhsateen in the Holy Quran when we read the creator of the heavens and the earth who created everything who does he love and how can we have the love of the creator of love? We see verily Allah loves. Now truly we should want our names to be, when Allah says He loves, we want to find our names there. How can we do that? By taking upon ourselves the qualities that Allah describes Himself as loving. And one of the interesting facts is even the angels are not described as being beloved to Allah like the human beings are. For truly the worship of the angels compared to the worship of the human beings is nothing. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in this dunya where we cannot witness Him with our eyes, but we witness the miracles that He created and the existence that He put. And when we reflect over the greatness of everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, and we glorify Him. Therefore, we attain a status closer to Allah even than the angels who don't know what it is like to be veiled from the reality of existence and who don't have the temptations and the struggles that we face as human beings. This life is filled with tests and difficulties. And unfortunately, we live in a time when many people are taken away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either because Allah gives them too much or they're taken away from Allah because of the difficulties that life throws at them. Oh human being, what diludes you? What makes you forget your most generous Lord? And the answer is in the question. A lot of times the generosity of Allah makes us forget Him because He gives us health, wealth, power, and status. And we forget the need that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately we forget the appointment that we have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other people on the other hand, when they face difficulties, when we find an increase in Islamophobia and anti-Muslim hate crimes, then we start preaching a message that we should hide our faith 
we should hide our identity, we forget to value our faith, whereby our faith, it, faith is a means by which we can connect with our Creator. And what a beautiful gift this faith is. If we recognize what a gift our faith is, we would always be willing to sacrifice for our faith. We would never sacrifice our faith. Our faith is the greatest of gifts. It helps us connect with the creator of everything, the one who created the sunrise and the sunset and the moon and the trees and everything that exists, who gave us our own selves. He wants to have a relationship with us and he wants to love us and he loves us and he wants us to love him and the faith is the means by which we can achieve that. But we have to value this faith and it's easy to be steadfast in times of ease and in times of hardship when we reflect over the beautiful teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us that the first people to enter Jannah on the day of judgment and those who enter Jannah without judgment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them, they are those who were grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease and in times of hardship. The first people to enter Jannah and those who enter Jannah without judgment are who? Who are grateful to Allah in times of ease and in times of hardship. When things were easy, they used their wealth, their health, their status to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to forget Allah, not to disobey Allah. When things were difficult, they remained steadfast and they put their trust in Allah. They didn't sacrifice their deen. They didn't compromise on that, which was most important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that resolve. One of the tragedies, I think, as Muslims in America, we, we don't realize what a gift our faith is, and therefore many Muslims, unfortunately, we fall into the mistake of sacrificing our faith instead of sacrificing for our faith. Sacrificing our deen instead of sacrificing for our deen. And this is made easier thanks to the Islamophobia industry that we've documented at CARE that spent over $200 million to demonize Islam in America. Not to scare non-Muslims away from Islam, but to scare Muslims away from their faith. To make Muslims ashamed of their identity. And as Muslims, we must remember that our gift, our faith, is the most valuable gift that we have. There was a Syrian refugee who said some very, very powerful words that we should all reflect over. It was a refugee who literally lost everything. And there are millions of people like him today. And it's only Allah's blessing that we're not in their situation. And trust me, there's people in America who want us to be in that situation. And if we don't value our faith by practicing our faith, and we don't value our freedom as Muslims in America to practice our faith by defending that freedom, we may be in that situation. In Tennessee, they tried to pass a law that practicing Islam is treason punishable by 20 years in jail. That is unconstitutional, it is un-American, and yet they tried to pass it on the books. In Florida, I helped assist an imam who was facing 20 years in jail because they labeled him as a terrorist, and the only evidence they had that he was a terrorist was his possession of Islamic books. And his reading on Surna al Qawm al Kafirin after the khutbah uh, uh, in Salat al Jumu'ah. I couldn't believe it. I actually visited him in jail and I walked into the jail. He hugged me. He said, hey, You're the first Muslim to visit me in three years. His feet were shackled and were bleeding by being in chains 24 7. Solitary confinement for three years. He said, Why are you here? He said, They're charging me. They're saying that I'm a terrorist. I said, What evidence do they have? Maybe you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. He said, No, Allah, I just possessed Islamic books. They didn't like some of the books I had. And they want to be an informant. I refuse to be an informant, so they're labeling me as a terrorist. And the only evidence they're using is my possession of Islamic literature and my teaching the Quran. And the community was too scared to stand with him, but I said, You know what? We have to appreciate our faith by practicing our faith. We have to appreciate our freedom by defending that freedom to practice that faith. So, Alhamdulillah, we sat and we ordered his trial and we told the judge, Your Honor, if you give this man 20 years in jail, and the only evidence you had is his possession of Islamic books, you can throw out the U.S. Constitution. You can throw out the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which gives each and every American the freedom to practice the religion of their choice without government harassment. And alhamdulillah, the judge quoted us verbatim when he released him and reunited him with his family. And now the imam is continuing to teach the deen and alhamdulillah, engage in the effort of da'wah. But the point is we can't take our freedom to practice our faith in this country for granted. And alhamdulillah, it's easier to practice Islam in America than most other places in the world. The freedom to practice our faith that we have here, we find in very few other places. The fitna is everywhere, but the freedom is found in very few other places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us and the law is also with us. Therefore, being Muslims in America should be our excuse to practice Islam more, not less. If we can't practice here, we can't practice anywhere. 
value this faith because you are one of a few people who have it. Out of every hundred people, 99 people don't know Allah and His Messenger. Don't know where they came from, where they are and where they're going. And it's your role to stand up and through your example, how do we challenge Islamophobia? Not by hiding our faith or hiding our identity or telling people what we are not. We challenge Islamophobia by proudly embracing our faith and then being in the best service to others in society. We tell, show them what Islam is, not tell them what Islam is not. So value this faith and also value the freedom you have to practice this faith and invest in defending it. Don't take it for granted. As I mentioned, it's only Allah's rahmah that we're not in the situation of those refugees. And there's many people who wished that we would be in those situations even within the United States. And honestly, not being in the situation of the refugees is only a blessing if we're using the blessings that Allah has given us to get closer to Him. If we're using it to forget Him and disobey Him, then it's better to be in their situation. So anyway, this refugee, he said, Nothing remains with me. I've lost everything. Everything that we sacrifice our deen to get, his home, his career, his wealth, his family, his friends, he lost it all. Nothing remains with me. My deen is only my religion remains with me. Why? Jua, it is inside me. And that's the truth of the matter. Our faith, it is the most valuable thing that we have. Excuse me. It is the most valuable thing that we have and it is the only thing that cannot be taken away from us by force. We can only choose to give it up. So never choose to give up your faith, no matter what difficulties and tests we face. And when we value our faith, we appreciate our faith, we're willing to sacrifice for our faith instead of sacrificing our faith, then we can fulfill our role in this country as what the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distinguished us with. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I'm putting a representative on earth. What is the role of the Khalifa of Allah on earth? The role of the Khalifa of Allah is through the work that Allah wishes to be done in each and every situation. So that when people are hungry, the Khalifa of Allah feeds them. When people are facing poverty, the Khalifa of Allah helps them. When people are sick, the Khalifa of Allah tends to them. When people face oppression and injustice, the Khalifa of Allah protects them and helps them. But to have that strength and the energy to fulfill our role as the Khalifa of Allah, we have to be willing to offer sacrifice. And we have to appreciate this faith. My brothers and sisters, standing up against injustice and oppression within society is amongst the greatest acts of worship. When we look in our faith, subhanAllah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, who is most beloved to Allah? That is the most important question. Nothing is more important than being beloved to the one who created us and who sustains us and who sees us and who hears us and whom we will return to. Nothing can be greater than having a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the Sahaba asked the profound question, Ya Rasulullah, who is most beloved to Allah? And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa answered, the most beloved to Allah are those that are most beneficial to the creation of Allah. Because when you love Allah, you love His creation. And you show them respect and honor. You serve them. If they don't know their Lord, then you become a means of them knowing their Lord. The most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who spread the love of Allah in the hearts of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was asked, what deed is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, it is that you enter happiness in the heart of your brother, or that you relieve from them difficulty. Our faith is a faith built on ihsan, showing the utmost character and respect and kindness and mercy to those around you. And that through your ihsan, you build the faith stronger in the hearts of your fellow Muslims, and you become a means of others finding guidance. Inna Allah yuhib al muhsineen Verily Allah loves those who engage in ihsan. And we find the story of the importance of standing up against injustice and helping the oppressed in the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him something profound. He said, وَاصْطَنَعْتُكَ nafsi, O Musa, I chose you for me. And what can be greater than being chosen for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, وَاصْطَنَعْتُكَ nafsi." Then what is this mission? What does it mean to be chosen for Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, اذهب أنت وأخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري. Go you and your brother with my signs and don't slacken in remembering me. This isn't the mission, but this is how you can prepare for the mission. Don't try to go at it alone. Be with your brother. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, nothing is greater in our community than the brotherhood and the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled between us. And as long as we support each other and love each other 
and treat each other with ihsan, compassion, mercy, we will continue to be successful. But if that love turns into enmity, then we will be divided and we will be defeated in this life and God forbid the next. So Allah tells him, go you and your brother with my signs and don't slacken in remembering me. The mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing Musa alayhi salam for is a great mission. And for him to be successful in that mission, he needs to have a great awareness, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. The scholars have written that many of us as Muslims, we believe Allah is with us, we believe Allah sees us, we believe Allah hears us, but we're not aware that He sees us. We believe it, but we're not aware. There's a difference between belief, which is in the mind, and awareness, which is in the heart. When you're aware, you're fully cognizant, that is taqwa. And that is why we often fall into sins and mistakes, because while the belief that Allah sees us is there, the awareness, the consciousness, the ihsan, the Rasulullah was asked, what is ihsan? He said, it is to worship Allah as if you see Him, and knowing that even if you don't see Him, He sees you. That is awareness. He was asked, what is iman? He said, iman is to believe Allah sees you. But then he asked, what is ihsan? And ihsan was that awareness. We should try to build that awareness. So he said, to build that awareness, to have the strength, to overcome the difficulties and the challenges you face, you have to be spiritually nourished. But one of the problems that we live in our community today is that we definitely focus on physical nourishment of the body, but we forget the importance of spiritual nourishment. Rasulullah warned us to be in the habit of doing good deeds. He said, be in the habit, be in the habit of consistently doing the righteous deeds, the deeds pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like recitation of the Holy Quran. And in fact, this is a problem that in our community, often we find days and weeks, sometimes months go by and we're not opening the book of Allah. Whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who was sent as a mercy to us, on the day of judgment, we will all aspire to drink from his hands from Al-Kawthar so that we never face thirst again. He was sent as a mercy to us and on the day of judgment, he may complain to Allah, he will complain to Allah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورَ The messenger will complain on that day, my Lord, my people, they took the Qur'an as something to be neglected. We cannot neglect the Qur'an. We are the only people in this world who can say that we have the unchanged words of the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who inspired the sunrise and the sunset and the beauty that is around us, who inspired everything and was inspired by nothing. He is the one who gave us the Qur'an. We're the only people in the world who can claim to have the unchanged words of the one who created ourselves and our consciousness. How often do we reflect over these words? Very, very important that we revive our connection with the Qur'an as one of the greatest good deeds that we do, daily recitation of the Qur'an, and service to others, service to humanity. See, it is that personal worship that we do in private that gives us this nourishment and the strength to publicly do the work of challenging injustice, speaking truth to power, helping the poor and the needy and the oppressed with sincerity. Because otherwise, to do all that without sincerity is worthless. So it's very important, my brothers and sisters, that we engage in our spiritual nourishment. The Prophet ﷺ said, be consistent and get in the habit of doing good deeds before a time comes of fitness, such difficulties and trials and tribulations that are dark like the darkest of nights where a person wakes up as a believer and goes to sleep as a disbeliever, selling his deen for the dunya. Why did the Prophet ﷺ emphasize that the cure to protect yourself in that time is to be in the habit of doing good deeds? Because these good deeds, these amal salihat the recitation of the Qur'an, the frequenting, the masajid, the dhikr, the keeping the good company, all of this, it builds spiritual nourishment. And when the soul is healthy and it is attacked through doubts, through Islamophobia, through different ideologies, different questions, different difficulties, the soul remains steadfast because it's spiritually healthy. But when the soul is, is starved of the light that comes through worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the righteous deeds, then the, somebody comes with the smallest objection, the smallest question, the smallest thing you see in the news and the person sells out their faith. So it's very important we engage in our spiritual nourishment so that we can fulfill our role. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Go you and your brother with my signs and don't slacken in remembering me. And what was the mission of Musa alayhi salam then? Go to the Pharaoh for he has transgressed and challenges oppression. 
challenging the dictators of our time, challenging the oppressors, challenging the corrupt. That is a form of worship, helping the oppressed, helping the disenfranchised, helping those who's having their children are separated from them. SubhanAllah, what was the uh, tactics of Fir'aun? He literally divided his people based on their ethnicity and he ripped away children from their mothers. And that's what we find happening within our own time. The political leadership of this country likes to turn Americans against each other based on ethnicity and promote racism. And they've taken thousands of children away from their parents. It's a Fir'aunic ideology that we are up against. An ideology of worshipping the nafs. Where Fir'aun would say, Ana rabbukumul a'la, I am your great Lord. And the current leaders of our time also saying, I am the best and I am the greatest. Worshipping the self. Whereas Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they wish justice and compassion and guidance for the creation of Allah. They love each and every person out there. Why? Because when they see them, they say, Hada khalqullah. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want good for the creation of my Lord. So as Musa alayhi salam challenged Fir'aun, what did Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used Fir'aun to gather all of the people to listen to the debate between Musa alayhi salam and the representatives of Fir'aun. And this is a miracle of our time really that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has people attacking the deen of Allah, he gets all of them talking about the deen, which gives us a platform to engage in da'wah and not tell people what we are not, but show them what we are. So Fir'aun gathered all of the people to listen to Musa alayhi salam. And likewise, as people today talk about a Muslim ban and that Islam hates this country, allegedly coming from even the White House, Alhamdulillah, everybody's having conversations of how they can stand with the Muslim community and learn more about Islam. And more people are embracing the deen, Alhamdulillah. So all the people were gathered. And when the showdown happened between Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the representatives of Fir'aun, of course, the people, even the representatives of Fir'aun embraced Musa alayhi salam. They all believed in him. And therefore, they escaped with him. And as they escaped from Fir'aun and they were leaving Egypt and they reached the sea, they find this army, the sea is in front of them and the army of Fir'aun behind them. And what do they do? What do they say? They say, Inna la mudrakun, we're doomed, we're overtaken, we're destroyed. Say they didn't have that love to sacrifice for the deen. Otherwise, they would have been excited. In the worst case, they suffer for the sake of Allah and their reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Too many Muslims today also have this mentality of inna la mudrakun, we're doomed. Let us hide our identity. Inna la mudrakun, we're doomed. Let us avoid praying in public. Let us change our names. You know, we were studying how the New York City Police Department, the first Muslims they spied on in New York City were the Muslims who changed their name from Muhammad to Mo. Saying, what are these people trying to hide? Hiding your faith and your identity doesn't work, my brothers and sisters. You have to embrace it. And then while proudly holding on to your faith, challenging Islamophobia through service to others, that's how you overcome Islamophobia, is by having Muslim youth that are proud of their faith and their identity, and then serving others, and saying, this is the example my beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught me. And through that, people fall in love with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. So the followers of Musa Alaihi said, Inna la mudrakun, we are doomed, we are destroyed. But that is when the remembrance of Allah came to save Musa alayhi salam. Remember Allah told him, وَلَا تَنِيَ فِي ذِكْرِي Don't slacken in remembering me. When his people gave up hope, that is when Musa alayhi salam said, Kalla, For sure we are not destroyed. Why? إِنَّ مَا يَرَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ My Lord is with me. He will guide me. That dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, when things became difficult and overwhelming, gave him hope. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the sea for Musa alayhi salam and him and his followers escaped. And Allah destroyed his enemies. The importance of the dhikr of Allah. Compare that to the situation when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda to go to Medina. And Abu Bakr and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa were in the cave and the mushrikeen reached that cave. Did Abu Bakr say, inna la mudrakun, we're doomed? No. He had love for Allah and his messenger. He wanted to offer sacrifice for the deen because he knew the reward for sacrificing for the deen was eternal. He didn't want to sacrifice the deen. And therefore, when he was there, he wasn't afraid for himself, Abu Bakr. But he was worried about the messenger. In that situation, the Prophet ﷺ told his companion Abu Bakr, don't grieve, don't be sad. He didn't say, don't be scared. Abu Bakr wasn't scared. He said, don't be sad, don't worry about me. Why? Allah is with us both. And with Musa ﷺ, Musa said, my Lord is with me. He was the one who had the dhikr. 
But in the situation of Bakr, they both had the love and the commitment for the deen. And Allah was with them both and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. My brothers and sisters, as Muslims in America, I want to emphasize that we've been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tremendously. We've been given more freedom to practice our faith here than almost anywhere else. And we've been given our faith, which is a means by which we can have the best of this life and the next and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I urge you all, and this point of this khutbah today as I summarize, is that we must value our faith, that it is a means of connecting with Allah by practicing our faith and being willing to sacrifice for our faith instead of sacrificing our faith. Next, we must value our freedom as Muslims in America to practice this faith by investing in protecting that faith through the efforts of care and other organizations. Thirdly, we must translate that private worship that we do into public service for others, which becomes a means of da'wah. So find a positive role and positive impact you can play to share the best of what our deen is about within society so that your efforts can become a means of guidance for others and that you can achieve that love of Allah. In Allah, you hibbul muhsin. Allah loves those who do, who do good. And I end with this beautiful advice to help us achieve all of this. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhu al-lathina amanu, sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullah la'allakum tuflihun. If you want to be successful, do these four things. Sbiru, be patient. When things get tough and you hide your faith, you hide your identity, you're not willing to pray in public, that's no sabr. Sbiru, be patient. Hold on to the deen. Sabiru, compete in patience. Don't let the efforts of the Islamophobes to attack the deen of Allah be greater than our own efforts to defend the deen. Make sure that we are doing something in our life through our charity, through our volunteer work, through our efforts to share the beauty of Islam in our society and protect the freedom that we have in this country to practice our faith. Warabi to defend your community. Don't take your freedom for granted. In America, as a civil rights lawyer, the biggest point I emphasize is never ever speak to the FBI without a lawyer. It is the stupidest thing you can do. As a lawyer, that's my professional legal opinion. Take it free of charge. And you don't have to, especially when you have organizations like CARE that have free lawyers, that if the FBI messes with you, just say, I don't want to speak to you without my lawyer. And they say, oh, you don't need a lawyer. It's going to make things worse. You have something to hide. You don't need one. Say, thank you. I'm busy. My lawyer will take care of it. Take their number, contact CARE, and let the CARE lawyers represent you and take care of it free of charge. Because what happens, I've seen this happen so much, is innocent Muslims who've done nothing wrong start, start speaking to the FBI without a lawyer, and the FBI twists their arms and forces them to become informants and spy on the Muslim community. And there isn't even anything to spy on, so then they force them to find mentally deranged children and brainwash them to commit crimes. I've documented this. You know, alhamdulillah, we've spoken about this at the White House under the Obama administration personally with his top advisors, and they acknowledged that it's a problem. So never ever speak to the FBI without a lawyer. Defend your faith and your freedom in this country. And invest in defending the freedom. What taqullah and have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can be successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to truly value and appreciate our faith. To see our faith as a means of us loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to help us invest in building that spiritual nourishment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can translate our faith into action for society that uplifts the poor and the oppressed and that becomes a means of guidance for humanity. And through our willingness to sacrifice for our faith instead of sacrificing our faith, we hold strong to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes a means of guidance for others. My brothers and sisters, Sisters, we have the faith today because the Sahaba sacrificed yesterday. And if we're not willing to sacrifice today, our children may not have our, the faith tomorrow. And if Islam disappears publicly today by Muslims hiding their identity, it will disappear privately tomorrow. Value this faith. It's a gift. May Allah help us make the most of this short time in our dunya that we achieve His love before we return to Him. And then when we return to Him, that become the most beautiful moment of our existence. We return to Him with Him pleased with us and us pleased as well. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina muhammadun amduhu rasooluh. Ya ayuhu al-muslimun ittaqullah wa adhkullah dhikran kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. Ya kullah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-Quran al-Kareem. Ba'ad a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa al-Asr inna l-insan lafi khusr. Illa al-lazina amanu wa'amnu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa qa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man qala la ilaha illallah dakhla al-jannah. Fa ya ayuhu al-muslimun ittaqullah wa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim.
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله لا إله المسلمون اتقوا الله واذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد هذا بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم في للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وفرج عن إخوان المظلومين وانصرهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعد من نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أقيم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر